Hey guys, out here in Utah, look, you can see, there's my wifey coming, Amanda. We're down here, today's actually my birthday. We have got the absolute most beautiful, gorgeous view. Look at that, how's it out? There, yep. See? <laughs> hey guys, I wanna shoot this quick video. So I had this client and her name is uh, Rachel. And she actually, she lives in New York. When I first found her, she was charging, no joke, $99 a month for bookkeeping. $99 a month, and it's crazy because in New York, I mean, I used to live in New York when I was a kid. I mean, that's hardly even uh, a meal in New York for, for like two people, uh, much less actually doing you know any bookkeeping or accounting services. And so I told her, I said, look, these prices are ridiculous. I was like, you gotta start charging 500 or $1,000 a month. She's like, Andrew, there's absolutely no way. You know, and at this point in time, she had a couple of employees and um, some contractors, and she was doing pretty well. She was doing probably three or four hundred thousand dollars a year. But I said, "Look, just just trust me. Like, just go in next time you talk to somebody. You know, assuming they're not doing like hundred thousand dollars a year, they're doing like let's say five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand a year in sales, a million, two million, three million, and just ask them. Just ask. Just say, you know, just don't even worry about you know the pricing. Just say." $750 a month. Just try it. Just as like, oh my God. I wanted to do more of myself and I didn't have the mindset. So Andrew really helped me think bigger, charge more and express my value to the client. Cause I never understood how can I charge $500 a month without really, I don't know. I, I never knew how to express my value. And I, I don't know. So I, I, I focus on the result. Okay. Listen, if you're gonna, if you're gonna sign up with me, I'm able to help you save $15,000 in taxes. And if you, because you hired somebody cheaper than me, you've been paying somebody really $15,000 in taxes every single year for the past 10 years. So that's $150,000. And you think I'm expensive? That's expensive. that's expensive. And, and you know, having the anxiety of really not knowing what's going on or having, I don't know, a team of asking questions. So that's how I saw it. And so she went out and did it. And obviously it worked. And I think so many times, you know, you guys are worried about, um, you know, the pricing and, oh, what's the pricing going to be? And I, you know, recently saw this, this like frenzy in the internet. People are holding town halls and panicking. Oh my gosh, QuickBooks is, QuickBooks is starting to take on accounting clients. And I've been a QuickBooks pro advisor for years and now they're turning their back on us and I'm going to have, they're going to take all my business. And there's like this sort of a frenzy panic going on out there. And guys, look, this is an opportunity. This is a big opportunity for you to reassess what it is that you're doing. I mean, for $100 a month or $200 a month or $300 a month, if you actually value your time and what you do, you cannot even have, I mean, you can't even answer an email for $200 a month, much less actually, you know, log into a QuickBooks file and do some bookkeeping. But it's a client, I mean, it's a client that you have to deal with. It's somebody that you have to talk to. It's somebody whose answers you have to email. It's a report you have to put together. It's somebody who's going to have questions. And when you look at that QuickBooks image, and I actually attached it as the thumbnail to this video. I'm going to make sure my team puts it on here. I'll actually flash it right now. Boom. And um, when you look at it, I mean, they're charging just a couple hundred bucks a month. I mean, you, you wouldn't want those clients anyway. Let them have it. Let them have it, all these little micro businesses. Um, the reality of it is, is that the clients that are going to go and take that kind of service are the same ones that are doing things like Bench or these other, you know, Spark and, and uh, you know, QuickBooks, you know, uh, bookkeeping. They're all these teensy tiny guys. You got to think about it like Rachel. Like, look, there's absolutely no way to really make a business doing, you know, you should be doing 250000 a year in sales before you even hire one person. Okay. So if you're not doing that. Like I see so many people that are doing eighty thousand dollars a year in sales. Oh my gosh, I need to hire. I need to get somebody. I'm oh, I'm so swamped. I got so much work. It's like yeah, because your pricing is so low, and so you wouldn't want the clients that they're taking anyway. Thank goodness they're taking them off your back. You want to focus on people that are a little bit bigger. People doing five hundred, seven hundred fifty thousand a year in sales. People that have a real business. People that want to pay somebody that actually knows what's going on. Never. You got to just stop even using the word bookkeeper. I told a woman that the other day who was a bookkeeper. She was beside herself, even though in her last job, she was a CFO. I, didn't, I, don't, Andrew, I don't feel like I'm providing CFO services. I like ask her what she's doing. She talks about all these clients that she's making money, saving their business, like <laughs> helping them understand the company in a whole new way. You guys got to stop calling yourself bookkeepers. Automatically, you are going to be in a, in a race to the bottom in a competition with these big companies that are, you know, for some reason wanting to take on that work. So... Look, if you're one of these people that's freaked out about QuickBooks started, uh, you know, taking on bookkeeping clients, just take a pause and think about how you can redesign your whole business. Is this going to take your business away overnight? No, but this has been going on. This isn't going on today or this last couple of weeks. I mean, this has been going on for years. 
um, you got to get you got to be working with bigger companies like you when you're first getting started you're doing less than a million a year in sales you have to win on high prices you cannot win on low prices you, you know you don't you're not going to make any profit you're not going to make any margin you're not going to have any money to pay employees if you're not doing 250,000 a year in sales before hiring anybody your prices are too low if you have 500,000 a year in sales if you have the right pricing and the right scope on your engagements you should do uh, you should have one or two full-time employees. You should do 60% net profit between salary and net profit. A million a year in sales, you should have maybe four employees, 50% net profit or more. And so if you're not hitting those numbers, you know, the business that they're taking from you, you didn't even have in the first place. You got to redesign this sucker from the ground up. And so many people I see whenever, you know, external disasters happen, whether it's the economy or competition or whatever the case may be, they sort of just freak out. They get into this reactive, frantic mode you guys got to use this as an opportunity to take advantage of it. Every single time something bad has happened, when I look at my business's performance, whether it be sales start to decline or profits start to decline, I go into a mode where I just look for a reinvention. I look for a complete reinvention. And I think about everything I've done wrong, everything I've always wanted to change. And I'm like, damn it, I'm doing it today. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to just redesign the entire business. I'm actually, I came on this vacation for the last, you know, three or four days or so. And I've been thinking about the next reinvention that I'm going to go through. But everything great in my life, every big major change that I've ever had has come from a complete and total reinvention. But when things are going good, there's no real needs to change. When you're making a lot of money, when things are trending in the right direction. But when things go bad, you sort of take a step back and you think, shit, <laughs> you know, we, need to, we need to change the game here. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do now that they're taking these small little crappy clients? Are you going to keep competing against these guys? Are they going to come work with you? You know, working from home. What are you wearing right now? Yoga pants? <laughs> so many people I talk to, they're, they're trying to start a business in their first couple of years. I get them on the phone. I'm like, what are you wearing? Then? Yoga pants? Nobody takes anybody serious in yoga pants. Even if you guys are working from home, you need to be wearing jeans at least. You need to be wearing a nice blouse or a button down or something. You don't even take yourself seriously when you're dressed like that. Look, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you guys got a chance to do a sweet vacation like this in Utah. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. They had a couple feet of snow drop and, um, Hope you guys get out there and enjoy some of the weather.